guys, this is Brad at Main Stage Music, and you guys are here for the very first live stream of the year that features our second new feature. Okay, so in, in previous episodes, we said that we we're going to change the format a little bit where one episode is going to feature a live artist. Well, that was two weeks ago, and hopefully you guys caught that with, with Bed Kaczynski and their form of kind of alternative music. Actually, we got a lot of people, a lot of great feedback from that, so hopefully you watched it. If you didn't, you can go back and check them out in our video section. Um, but this is our first episode that features product demonstrations. So... We had so many people that um, might have enjoyed one of our episodes featuring an entire brand where we brought on um, product uh, experts and representatives from the factory and stuff that um, would share aspects of the product, but it wasn't quite in-depth on a specific product. So we had a lot of people ask for that, so that's going to be kind of the new format. So this week I thought I would show you one of the most popular items hands down in the shop. And that's the one that I've been playing today, okay? It is um, a brand of guitar that we had never heard of up until just a couple of years ago called Tajima. And it is a Brazilian brand. And um, apparently Tajima is a big deal down in Brazil. But, you know, here in the United States, uh, it's not a brand that we see so often. I mean, obviously, we're used to the, we'll call them legacy brands, you know, the Martin, the Fender, the... Gibson and so on. And so um, sometimes people, when they see a brand that they don't recognize, they immediately discount it like, oh, this is some, you know, poor quality and uh, instrument. That, that couldn't be farther from the case with the uh, talking about Tajima. Um, the one I'm picking out today, though, is uh, one called the TW61. Um, TW is their, um, they call it the Woodstock series. I don't really get it why um, companies who are from different countries, you know, and don't really, you know, feel the need to connect with pop culture in this country by saying Woodstock or things of that nature. But hey, that's what they're calling it, the Woodstock series. And the Woodstock series are not made in Brazil, but they're made in Asia. And they feature kind of classic design. So think like Strat style guitars, Tele style guitars, so on. But the t this one that we're playing today, or f uh, featuring today, excuse me, is um, kind of familiar looking, right? You might say, well, that looks like a Fender. Uh, kind of. But what it really is, is a mashup of guitars that, it's basically a guitar that never existed. So it's a mashup of several styles that are inspired by different classic things, which is kind of why we love this one the most. Okay, we do carry the different Tajima models, which if you're at the shop, you've noticed. Um, but the TW61 has a close place in our heart because we like um, unique things. Okay, now, by the way, before I get too deep into this, um, I do have my phone here. And so if you guys are watching at home and want to comment, we definitely encourage your comments and questions and so on and so forth. And so we are all about, um, you know, about interacting with you guys. This show is all about y'all. So, so feel free to um, chime in with the comments and so on. Um, hey, look, oh, comments are already coming in. So uh, Dale Prince um, chimed in. He goes, loves the new Streetmaster. He picked up a Martin today. You're absolutely welcome, Dale. Great player. And um, so obviously, if you guys have any questions or whatnot about the guitar, um, but basically, I'm just going to be going over the features. It's the product demo. Um, so first of all, um, the body style is, I guess, most commonly referred to as an offset body style. Um, in the mid-1960s, um, a lot of the guitar companies looking for something new and fab and hip to connect with these teenagers who are all in their 70s and 80s now. Um, and so actually, there were car company designers that helped um, come up with some of these styles. So Fender had several models, um, the Jazzmaster, the Jaguar, um, the Mustang, you know, there were all sorts of, you know, cool new styles, but also Gibson, not to be outdone, they had one, uh, the Firebird, okay, which again was the offset body style of the time. Um, so this does have an offset body style, very reminiscent of the Fender, um, Jaguar, Jazzmaster. But unlike the guitars that Fender came out with in the early 60s, um, 
technically late 50s, but um, they had a very unique tremolo style where they actually had a pool route in the body and there was a series of springs down there and this long tremolo arm and, and the trem arm was um, kind of spongy in there. And then you had a, fr- a f- bridge with two long poles that sat in two cups that would rock back and forth to ha- kind of help with stability of tuning. Um, a lot of people noticed that the Jaguar and Jazzmaster didn't have that same kind of tight response and connection that the Telecaster and Stratocaster had. Well, that was because of that bridge and tailpiece or tremolo system. It didn't quite have that solid connection at the time. But what it did have is a really nice, juicy uh, tremolo that um, was, I mean, who didn't hear all that cool surf music and whatnot of the 1960s? Um, However, for today's modern player, people, you know, not as into that style of tremolo. So one thing that Tajima did is they gave you the neat style of that offset body, but they put a modern style two-point tremolo. Now, if you're wondering what two-point means, these two little um, pieces right here on the um, bridge assembly are called the studs, okay? And they basically have a little uh, inset scooped part that then the bridge assembly has a very sharp knife edge that, you know, connects to that stud um, that allows it to rock like a teeter-totter, a fulcrum, against that point so that when you go back and forth, it's very smooth. Well, on um, earlier fenders, they hadn't quite come up with this. They used... um, basically just six holes that they drilled right into the bridge and then they kind of put a little lip on the tremolo so it just kind of naturally rocked well as um guitar innovators came along they realized how nice that and smooth that two-point bridge is and so on nicer fender stratocasters like um the usa made models um or some of the um more costly signature models like the Jeff Beckin, for example, they have a two-point tremolo, not the traditional six-screw tremolo that's on the lesser expensive or some of the older models. So that's a neat um, feature. But again, the bridge is still very reminiscent of a 1960s uh, style. Oh, okay, we got some more questions coming in here. Um, how do Tajima guitars compare to Squire, Epiphone, etc.? Thanks for uh, the question, Stephen. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you, they're very similar very similar. Um, you know, I would say uh, this would be easier to describe next to a Squire because it's a, a Fender style, you know, it's a bolt neck and so on. And um, I, I don't know if you've tried the new Squire classic vibe models, but it feels very, very similar to that. So if that helps, I mean, it's a very good quality that the, the fit and everything is very tight. Um, It's kind of sad to say that when the neck pocket on these is cleaner than most USA fenders were back in the 1970s, you know. So anyways, um, the body and neck is all gloss finished and they use a polyurethane finish just like Fender does. So it's very strong and it's got a nice look to it. They do kind of a mild tint uh, lacquer on the back of the neck. The neck is solid maple. The body, as far as we can um, find out, is made from alder, okay? So it's not plywood. We've looked inside. It's not plywood. Um, And it looks very plain, which is alder is most likely the uh, culprit. And uh, as far as uh, dimensions, it is a 25 and a half scale, so exactly the same as a Fender Strat or Telecaster. Um, The nut width is one and five eighths, okay? So it's not quite as wide as maybe a, uh, like an acoustic guitar, neck, but it's not skinny by any means. And the width at the 12th fret is two inches. So it, um, it has a nice flare that kind of goes up, you know, as you move up the neck, I would describe the neck shape as kind of a medium or a chunky C. It's not a baseball bat, but it fills your hand up really nice. It's a great feeling a neck. And then as far as the tuners, it's the vintage style six on a strip. I know it's hard to see, um, tuners with the little split tops, just like they did back in the sixties with Fender. The frets are a nice, uh, kind of a jumbo fret. So they, they feel great. Um, now as far as the controls, they, um, you have a volume and a tone control, so it's very straightforward, whereas a lot of the fenders had all these little switches and whatnot that might have been an on-off switch or a mute switch. This is very straightforward. So um, you have a three-way toggle, so I'm just going to go through it. The three-way toggle is the treble pickup. (laughs) 
If you guys are wondering what I'm playing through, by the way, I'm using my um, number nine. It's handmade in Dayton, Tennessee by my friend Chris Shibley of Deluxe Amplification. It's just a little nine watt um, single 10 combo. Um, it's awesome. Anyways, and, uh, and there's a little bit of tremolo and a little bit of a Boss Waza craft delay on there and a Boss reverb as well. <laughs> Awesome surfy sound. Okay, so you've got a volume and a tone. That's your treble position. And then you have your neck position, which is my favorite. But a nice full sound. Even completely without any, um, you know, effects on it. Just got a nice full bodied sound. That comes from the most important part of this. These are not Fendery pickups at all. These are commonly known as the P90, which was an overwound single coil that was made by Gibson primarily throughout the 19, we'll say late 40s, uh, really till today. They still use the P90 in some guitars, but it was primarily known as a 1950s style pickup. Unlike a Fender single coil, they're a lot hotter and they have a tubbier sound, okay? Some people mistake a sound of a P90 to a humbucker. The way you can tell though, they got, you know, noise. This is a single coil, so you're going to have some buzzing going on. But it's not terrible, and honestly, the sound is just... And again, that's nothing, folks. I mean, that's just amplifier, no reverb. Now, some people go, well, I like that Fender twanky, twangy sound, and so on. Well, first of all, the rear pickup... I mean, that's plenty of twang, but the last feature on this is really neat, okay? So you might see this little dial right here at the bottom. This is something that is a direct ripoff from Gibson of the early 60s, okay? And that is the term even, very tone, okay? Now, I'm a vintage nerd for all y'all who know me. Gibson had, in back in the late 50s, had come out with a little system they called the Very Tone System. And it was a five switch selector that uh, you could, uh, you know, basically click different tones without flipping your, um, your uh, selector switch. So what they, how they did that is they used little resistors and whatnot. And, uh, and it just affected the signal slightly as you flipped through it. So the one position, which is rolled all the way to the left, is basically off, okay? Then as you click to the next positions, which this is a roller switch. You hear that? I mean, there's a... Go back to the first one. So they do that with, again, little resistors and whatnot. It's a tone circuit, an analog tone circuit built in. So that's the first two. Here's the third one. Subtle. Again, these aren't like life-changing differences. But their tone difference is that if you're not getting the, the bite or whatnot that you wanted with one pickup, you might just need to flip that very tone switch. Let's go back to the off section. So, I mean, it's a really neat little feature, which for different styles of music could really, you know, show you something, right? You know, change the, the style a little bit um, outside of the selector switch. So kind of to show you the range. Um, so I started off playing that kind of surfy music, you know, I mean, everybody likes the... Um, but now it does have some range. So we're going to play like... Um, how about like a soft rock style ballad? And just so you can hear how that... Um, 
There we go. that neck position. position. You guys get the idea. You got some great questions coming in, I guess. So I guess I'll have to stop being a rock star for a second. All right, so um, that sounded pretty good, I think. You know, I mean, we're just using a little Tube Screamer Overdrive, if you guys want to know. All right, so um, their website is, says the body is Poplar. Hey, even infallible people like myself make mistakes sometimes you know what it is so yeah poplar that's a great uh, to know i was thinking alder just by looking at the grain on the inside of this thing so uh thank you for clarifying that and um kyle clark shoo get it brad sounds really good hey how do you think i got married you know gotta have them skills um so anyways um this is a cool little guitar right here and I have to say this one was just fresh out of the box and for anyone who was at the shop as I was fixing to leave to go do this you can see that all I did to this guitar okay is we had a little humidity issue which everyone's dealing with right now so I took a little bit of uh, 500 grit real fine sandpaper I hit the edges of the frets and man is it silky smooth now I mean, just feels great. I gave a quarter of a tweak on the truss rod because I don't like a lot of relief in my neck. The relief refers to the bow. There was a very slight amount. I got rid of that. Um, and I like a tremolo that actually works, okay? In other words, a trem should have a little bit of float, meaning the, the bridge here should be flat to the top, but it shouldn't be touching. In other words, you want it to go like this. Let me just show you. So you heard it go down, but you want it to go up a hair. That's the way I like it, Now that's really the way it should be done. Um, that way, you're really letting that knife edge work. It's not just locked to the face of it, and you don't want to have to fight it. You should just have real slight sounds like that. Um, now, a couple little points. I know you guys are wondering, how much does it cost? It's inexpensive. It's only 350 bucks. okay? Uh, put in perspective... Nothing that Squire makes that's even remotely close to this, uh, you know, level of stuff is within a hundred bucks of that price. So um, they've really done a wonderful job um, with this guitar. Um, additionally, it's a layout that Fender doesn't offer. Uh, they might now with that, um, 
what's it called, like alternate universe series or whatnot. But these are very non-Fender features. The Veritone is straight Gibson. The P90s are straight Gibson. The two-point trim, I guess some higher-end Fenders have it, but generally speaking, that's not something you see on the lower-end models. And um, But yeah, the, the style is, is really got it. And uh, they come in a few different colors. So you can get, um, this is the you know, kind of cool ventures style, the white with the tortoise, you know, you know, look, which is great. Um, you can also get it in a um, kind of a almost tomato soup red color we call Fiesta red. Um, and then there's black and sunburst. So, I mean, you have a whole variety of colors because Colors and variety are what make the world awesome, okay? So uh, I think you should have one of each one if you dig it, right? Or what Tajima needs to do is they need to make a matching base because I think that what we need is a revival of the matching guitars and guys wearing suits with little skinny ties that all, you know, kind of, because that was, man, that was when people cared about their audience. Now we're all just a bunch of jean, blue jean wearing long hairs that... You know, don't want to put on quite as good a show. But um, now the only, a couple of drawbacks. I mean, because, hey, I mean, I know y'all are going, okay, okay. He's trying to um, I just want to show you a couple of things that I noted um, that I didn't like, okay, about the guitar. Is the pots do work fine, okay? Okay. You got some nice fade there, okay? That's how you, you can tell if it's a good pot or not. If it's like nothing, 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 and then on, okay? And eh, it's a piece of garbage, okay? But this one... You get some nice fade there. The tone pop. It's pretty good. But this switch right here is a good toggle, right? But I'll tell you one thing that, um, you know, that I noticed, uh, we have sold a lot of these, but one thing I've noticed with this guitar is that the toggle switch, if you use a gig bag, these tend to break, okay? Because you've got this toggle switch, it sticks straight out. And maybe that's why Fender didn't use them. Maybe, you know, they use the blade style switches. And so this thing sticks straight up. And so if it, something hits this, that'll snap right off. And so the way they come from the factory is this piece of foam on there and whatever. But um, still, that's a design where you're going to want to get a hard shell case for this. Otherwise, I could see you snapping that um, switch off. And then as far as fixing the switch, yeah, I mean, you can do it, um, but there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 13 screws on this pit guard and all sorts of wires and stuff. It's not like a quick in and quick out job. So that's one little design thing. I love the three-way toggle, but I just think that if you guys gig a lot, you might snap one of those things off, and that's kind of a bummer. Um, other than that, you know, I don't mind saying... Um, oh, okay. One other little thing. So the fretboard is made from, they use the term technical wood. Okay. But what it is, is it is a material that is engineered wood. You guys have been seeing this a lot with maybe some of the Martin X model guitars that are black looking, right? What they're doing is they're using ground up wood bits and they emulsify it. So it's kind of like how they make chicken McNuggets, right? They take all the little pieces of chicken that you can't quite, you know, and they grind it up into a slurry and then they put it in molds and boom, yeah, that's, how, that's why all chicken McNuggets either look like a mitten or look like a boot, okay? Um, but anyways, they do that with this wood here. And so one thing is it is nice and black looking, but I don't know, call me old fashioned. Um, I think I would like to see some grain in it, but you know what? Most people don't care and most people don't want it. And I think also most people would appreciate it not being $150 more expensive because of having that. So, um, so yeah, that, that's a, pff. I mean, if those are my only two complaints, man, I'm telling you, and it's not even really a complaint. It's just one of those things where like, I don't know if you guys are like me, but if I buy something, I think, okay, how am I going to break this or how am I going to lose this or what's, you know, and um, so that's the only reason why I even um, mentioned that. Um, let me just make sure. Um, I also want to tell you that um, this guitar, as bizarre as this sounds, of all the stuff that we've sold, and we've got a lot of really nice things, we have sold more of this guitar than any guitar we've ever had, okay? 
I know that we have cr- well crossed the 200 mark on how many of these we've sold um, over the last few years. But I'll tell you what, I think that in, as I said, 200 plus in sales, we've maybe only gotten a couple, just a handful of them that came back. And it wasn't that they came back because this thing stinks. It just was, I don't know, for one reason or another, it wasn't their style. Whatever. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's so I have to tell you, I mean, these are really great guitars. And if what you're looking for is something that's just not another, you know, another, oh, everybody and their brother's got a, a Telecaster or a Stratocaster or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those guitars. But as artists, you know, if you want to be a little different and have a great rock solid guitar that has a lot of features and is cool. OK, but isn't just the same thing that everybody's got you know, and, and don't have a ton of scratch, you know, or maybe you just wanted one of these kind of, it's just a secondary guitar, man, I'm telling you, I would highly recommend coming down and checking out the TW61. And, um, and I really think that you'd like it. So, um, what other kind of, uh, oh yeah, that's right. We had a, uh, Another gentleman wanted to know about, does it blues, okay? It's not a very blues-looking guitar. I'll give it that, okay? But let's see if it'll blues. Got to have that uh, neck position pickup. Ooh, slow. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend coming down and checking out the TW61 by Tajima. Um, check us out in a couple of weeks. We're going to be featuring another great original artist for next month's um, live stream. And in the meantime, I guess we can kind of close this off with some surf music. And again, I wish you guys an awesome, you know, Tuesday. And I hope you have a great time, and I'm sure my son will come up with something really cool and, uh, and let you guys hear this thing on the way out with my favorite type of music to play.